Hello everybody, this is Refresh, and I'm here to do Sealed for Bloomborough on Magic the Gathering Arena. We are starting with regular Sealed and not traditional Sealed as usual, because traditional Sealed appears to be down at the moment, and so the only choice is regular Sealed. So we'll pay our 2,000 gems and jump right into it. All right, looks like we got one extra rare, two Mythics in Beza the Spounding Spring. Uh, enters, create a treasure token. That seems cool. You gain four life. Okay, so this is kind of like a balancing effect. You get stuff if your opponent has more stuff. Seems pretty cool. I think I'd be happy to play that. Glarb Calamity's Augur is a 2 4 death toucher. Look at the top card. That seems pretty good too. I think both of these are quite strong. Obviously, you can't play both. Um, but you have Clement the Worry Wart that in, is in the same space as Glarb. And Clement, I had this in my sealed pool for pre-release, but I didn't play him because the colors didn't work out right. But it looks like a pretty good frog card. And we even have another frog rare in Dream Dew and Trancer. Yeah, that's pretty good too. And then Portent of Calamity. Maybe the top X cards of the library. For each card that you put exile card from among, then put the rest in your graveyard. You may cast a spell from among the exile cards without paying its cost. And then if you exile four more this way. Okay, so this is pretty cool. I think it can be a decent uh, card draw effect or at least card improvement effect. Yeah, especially if you can cast it for five. I think it makes it quite good because then you can cast all your expensive stuff. Let's see, and the Thorn Vault Forger is also reason reasonably good. I think all of these could be played in the same deck, right? So that makes this a much more appealing way to go rather than playing with Bez of the Bounding Spring. Don't get me wrong, this is also a really strong card. Uh, maybe I, that's the way I will end up going depending on the, how the rest of the, of the sealed deck opens up. And then we have this fairly interesting land. It can be a utility land or a colorless land. So we'll see how that goes. I think I'm likely to play blue-green combination, splashing Glarb and making this a the the pack f for me or the deck for me so let's go ahead and see how that works uh just out of curiosity let's see how white looks just by itself oh i should also fix my land so that uh we are favoriting our new land here which is one of these lands so no longer this switch to the bloom barrel land by modern horizons hello bloom Barrow. Finally, we have the swamp. Erase this. Add this. Okay. We are all bloom burrowed out. And then going back to lands. We're white. What do we have here? Uh, white does seem a little shallow anyways. I mean, we have some good cards in here, but color, like number of cards in white seems a little bit on the short side. So... We, I mean, we might come back and look at it, but let's just look at what blue and green offers first because that's our most likely uh, place that we're going to be putting most of our cards. So uh, we could play these. And this will help us splash. This creates food, which might matter for this deck. Three tree mascot. I guess that's a way of fixing for colors as well and card types we might play this i don't know if we'll play this or not probably not let's take a look at the, what we have in this we, we actually don't have a lot of space to cut i wonder if there's some real strong black cards like fell we might want to put some of these in depending on how we're going uh, black looks okay too so let's let's see how we're doing with our our cards here. I do think that this is a decent combat trick. The power boost and the hexproof is nice. High stride is, I probably don't want to play this trick though. This this has hexproof, this does not. So we'll probably cut that. This is a removal spell. There's two of them, that's good. Crier is fine. Run away together gets us additional uses of our cards, so that's good. Uh, foraging this is pretty good too. Yeah, I have two of those. And that, we got some squirrels here. So, 
that's that. Threshold. Okay, it's less interesting. I don't know if I'd want to play this, but I c might have to. Let's see. If you cast control on Otter, okay, draw two cards. Oh dear. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, that's a lot of uh, random card draw cards. City Cliff Top Lookout is good. That'll help me fix as well. Corpse Ray Cultivator, pretty good. I like Clement. That is a way to bounce my stuff and get additional value off of some of these. Glarb is, let's see. I mean, I think our Glarb is just good. We just don't have a lot of things to cast with Glarb, so that's the one downside. But at least you can play Lance. That probably makes it worthwhile here. There's a lot of value in that. It's nice and slowing. Turn target creature. Your control gets vigilance and plus X plus X where X is the number of creatures. I think it is okay, not amazing. This is just okay as well. I think crap is okay as well, not amazing. So it, it's not an amazing color combination. Now I'm wondering if maybe I go like, I, I noticed that I have some squirrel synergies here. I think the blue is actually weak, aside, aside from our splashes. So maybe I'm gonna go green and black and then splash blue. Let's see if we can make that work. All right, well, there's a lot more cards, certainly in black. Let's see what we get with going black. Order is pretty good for what it is. Uh, Fell is amazing. Safer, great. Psychic Whirl, I don't think I need Psychic Whirl. Soothsayer, probably not as good. We'll cut the Whirl. Moonrise Cleric is double black, but it is a pretty good body. It gets us a life. I don't know if we want the Cutthroat. And it looks like we're not getting any Squirrels out of all of this, so... Huh. But I do think it... It looks like it'll play stronger overall just because there's a lot more going on and we have all that like high level removal instead of blue being a fairly shallow color so and we have more removal so we'll have to cut some things to make this work it i do feel like it's stronger overall than blue which i mean there's some some cards here that might be good in blue like runaway together bellowing crier Sharp is a better, uh, is a good combat trick. But yeah, there's not a lot of cards here, so I'm, I don't feel like I'm missing too much. Oh, Bandit's Tell, I missed that one too. Okay. So this one forces discards, and that's not amazing. Uh, I do like the removal here. Let's see, the Soothsayer, if you've gained or lost, you can surveil. So I think. That's not bad. The Moonrise Clerics, I think, are pretty good. Cutthroat maybe gets cut out of this. Because it doesn't play that amazingly with what I'm trying to do here. These just get us life, which is nice. This benefits off of that and gives us an additional ability. I don't think I want two of these. It's kind of expensive. Let's see. Portent of Calamity. For each of card type, you may exile a card from among them and put the rest in your graveyard. Yeah, I mean, this is a way to get a lot of cards and potentially for free. Yeah, seems good. Okay, we'll ha happily take that. Bandit's Talent. Does this play into what we're trying to do? Uh, it forces them to discard a card either t probably two lands or one real card. So two mana for a card, one for one. It's not amazing, but I guess it's okay. It does lock their hand at the beginning and then get us additional cards if they choose not to lock their hand. So, huh, that's a maybe. Forge or pay three, I think, or pay an extra. That's fine, that's good. Extra killing things is great. This gets us food, which is good. We don't have a lot of forge stuff, but you know the Thorn Vault Forager cares about that, so that's good. Uh, this Menace Death Touch 
for each creature in your graveyard and exile seems pretty good as well. All right, let's see. We're going to have to cut things. So we'll cut the talent because I don't think that really plays into what my deck is doing. I'm going to keep all the removal spells. I think bodyguard is fine. There's some forge ability here too. So we do care about foraging. Uh, that makes the Corpse Berry Cultivator good too. This, These all let me forage. We don't have a lot of food generation though. So that is something I do need to consider here. Feed. No. So Saver creates food. Okay, we only have one ability to create food. I'm going to cut the Junk Blade Bruiser because it cares about expending four. And I don't know how often I'm going to be able to expend four. Right? Is it? Is it? Is that crazy of me? I just have a lot of cards, so if I cut this, then it evens out a little bit more, and it's not really doing playing into any any of this deck's particular abilities, right? Yeah, this lets me draw two cards or freeze one of their creatures, and that seems pretty good. I do lose a creature to do that if I'm drawing the cards, but if it's a weaker creature, like one of these offspring here, it's not the worst thing. Uh, I can't forge a lot though, unfortunately not bad at least I find that I can't forge that much so I don't have a lot of food generation unfortunately uh, let's see is there something out of here this is food okay so this creates food I don't think it's worth putting this in just to make the food tokens though I think I'd rather just get the benefit every once in a while from exiling cards from my graveyard so we have three more cuts here to make this deck reasonable. Our curve is good. This is not really a seven, I think, or an eight. But I don't have a lot of self-exile, so, or I mean self-mill. So I don't know how often I'm gonna be able to cast this. Maybe I just cut this as well as one of the top cards. Yeah, that drops my curve a lot. So now I'm a lot more aggressive. I might be able to cut a land if I can cut this down a little bit more. Uh, and then just get really aggressive. So how many different types do I have? Uh, creature, instant sorcery, land. So I could take up to four different types possibly, but it might just be one card. Okay, maybe portent isn't as good as I'd hoped. So maybe we'll cut this. Because if I only get, like if I draw th three lands and a cre two creatures, I'm going to get two cards for five mana, right? That doesn't seem that good. And my curve is on the lower side. So I think we cut the portent. So we're just straight removal and fights, right? That's what we're doing here. That also helps reduce the number of green cards that I have, so that'll or blue cards that I have, so that'll help. Oak Hollow, this is pretty cool though. I put a plus one on each frog, rabbit, raccoon, or squirrel. Do I have a lot of frog, frog, rabbits, raccoon, frogs? Yes. Rabbits, not really. Raccoons, none. Squirrels, squirrels or frogs. That's probably good enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my curve is 2.8. I mean, I could cut one of these. I think I could just, maybe I just cut another card. Let's see, what what, what is my weakest cards here? I like all of these. Maybe the Soothsayer? Probably the Soothsayer, actually. I mean, it plays well with the Moonrise Cleric, but I don't really think I need that and these attack better and block better. So yeah, let's cut the Soothsayer. And then this is my deck. Seems okay. I have three green, white, blue sources. I have, well, four because of Uncharted Haven. Four, seven black sources and seven green sources. Is that good? Black, green blue yeah that seems reasonable 
uh, there's a chance that all this will blow up on me. I'm going to try the fountain port in here for now because it does offer a lot of utility, but it may be a mistake. So we'll, we'll start here and see where we go. All right, here we go. All right. I mean, we have our colors thanks to the Uncharted Haven. We have our Arbiter in this, so I think this is fine. We'll keep this. Okay, let's get the Haven going on black. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Let's see. I can play this as a 2-1. I'm not going to get the Offspring or the Forage. Is that okay? I think maybe I just play the Moonrise Cleric on turn 3 and leave this for turn 4 play. Probably. Okay, so we're going to just take the hit. We'll have the Moonrise Cleric coming in soon after flying through the air. Or maybe we play Glarb. Actually, Glarb makes a lot of sense because then I should be able to play lands off of him. Although, maybe on turn four. I'll start with the Moonrise Cleric. This is going to give them a lot of mana, though. That's going to be a problem for me. Yeah, that's that's kind of annoying. Uh, we'll play... Oh, I need double black to cast the Moonrise Clerics. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, we'll play this... And play the Corpse Break Cultivator. There's no Forge ability. Okay, that's fine. And then I could Bushy Bodyguard if I needed to. Okay. Alright, so they're going to push that through. Yep. Yep. I'm going to take a, a beating. They are... They are going off. That's pretty rough. Uh, I'm going to just take it this turn. But I hope that my witchy bodyguards can get me out of this. Okay. Well, we got this. I think at this point, the Moonrise Cleric... Uh, I think I need to play the bushy bodyguard, to be honest, because I need, I need to get some defense going here. So, we'll do this and we'll play the Offspring. Auto-pay. Yeah, we won't be able to. We won't be able to forage. So they're just. We're just all defense here all the time. Hopefully my opponent will slow down enough for me to. To catch up here, we'll glarb next turn then. Okay. They control a, a raccoon. It looks like. Yeah, there's a raccoon. Well, that's troublesome. I mean, there's a good chance I'm going to die here, but we'll do what we can. Yep. Nice. Well, this is probably too strong of a start for me to come back from. Uh, we'll play this and hope that I can... We'll play the land. Sure. That doesn't do a whole lot. At least we have this. Yeah, we'll pay. We'll pay this. Get the counter on on this, but I think I'm dead. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can survive if they, as long as they don't have some sort of pump spell. But even if they do, right? I'm just still just kind of dead, right? Yeah. Like if these die, I I die, right? So. Unless I can gain life. And they are... Wow, their deck is amazing for a sealed deck. Look at this. The, look at this. Um, we can play this. And then... We will cliff top lookout. Grab a land. It's not amazing, but that'll, we'll take it. And then... We can play... Moonrise Cleric. Maybe we just shoot a thing. We're going to die no matter what, right? So let's play this and, uh, and 
next turn, no attacks on the turn. Good game. They got me. Like, there's no way for me to survive this. This is just an amazing, amazing sequence here. I mean... Oh, they even have something on top of that. Amazing. Well played. Well played. We are, we are dead in every single possible way that we can be dead. So, okay, we'll block. Um, this will block here, we're gonna die. This will block here, this will block here, and dead. Dead to, dead to this. Wow, my opponent just went off. That was, that was amazing. That was an amazing sealed pull. My opponent deserves to go all the way to the end with that. I mean, assuming that you know they they weren't just getting lucky. All right, I mean we have main main two colors and you know cards that I can cast. I think this is fine. Say hello, hello. We got our lands. We'll play this so we can ramp a little. Play this. I think, we, I think we wish you bodyguard just to go wide here. Alternatively, I could cliff top lookout, but that's. I think this is just better in terms of its uh, value. Gets wins the uh, annoying race here. Let's see. We can play. We can play the lookout. That we're just going to be on team defense, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, we got another black land, so that's fine. Uh, I don't want to trade this for that. This for these, so we're on team defense again. My opponent is again a red white deck, so good on them. Okay, I mean, that's annoying. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna hold this to kill that. We'll just play the order then. Actually, we can play this guy, right? And then hold that. I think that's fine. So we'll play this. We're still on team defense. Next. No ability to forage. Yeah. And then no attacks in the turn. They might blow me out, but we'll see what we do. we'll see what happens. Uh okay. That's good. Nice and aggressive. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Okay. And this, oh, I see. That's really cool. Um, yeah. That's getting that up in the air, right? Without flying, okay. I'm gonna pass the blockers. I'm gonna block this here. And then I think I'm gonna let this one through and hit me for this turn. One blocker. And then savor this down. I don't know, we could get blown out pretty badly here. Okay, sure. Well, yeah, that's not good, but this is where we are. Um, Uncharted Haven would get us our blue land, so we'll play that. I think we have to wipe out their flyer because this is just going to get ridiculous. Uh, we could, yeah, I think we just have to wipe out their flyer. Yeah, exile this thing. I mean, they're they're both. You know, this is uh, forge. Do I forge my food? Yeah, let's let's go ahead and use it. I think that'll help me block better. Submit, and then no attacks. This is a tr this is definitely a problem though. 
I think Clement is my only way out of this one. Oh, I guess I could have forged for this and then still gotten this ability. That's too bad. Okay, yeah, removal. Good on you. Do I double block and risk being blown out? Yeah, let's let's try it. Okay, that's fine. Now things have stabilized a little. Okay. We're gonna play Clement. Um Do I bounce this back? No, right? There's no benefit to bouncing this back, so it's a mid zero. Um whenever Yeah, I could use him to we'll just play this. And then play this. And then we're just gonna hold no attacks. I'm gonna have to find some way to punch through this stuff here. Okay, well, we're taking this hit. This is a good combo, and I have to get rid of this. Okay. If you control that card, then it becomes just a 3 4. I think we have to stop this then, right? Well, this is really annoying as well. Okay, well, we're, we're gonna. I'm gonna stun myself. Can I take the hit? I think I can do four more turn. Yeah. Uh. Oh, interesting. You know, I should have done it. The triggers in the other order. We're going to stun the forager. Wait, wait. Did I do this right? If you control that creature, draw two creatures. Submit zero. Yes. So then I bounce it back. Yes. We'll play this, and then we'll play it back. So that's some value. It's not amazing, but it, it'll do. No attacks for now. They have a great combo here. My opponents have had some really good plays. I think at this point I'm going to trade my Bone by an Order for this so that I can get back the Wishy Bodyguard. Probably. Okay. Uh, until when it enters. Okay. Target creature I control gains plus X plus X in Vigilance, so it would be plus 4 plus 4 in Vigilance. Um, making a 7, 8? I mean, that's pretty good. Or I can do this. If I do this, do I have the mana? I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If I play this for 4, then I'll have 4 left for this, right? Yeah, okay. So tap... Tap, 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 play the orator. We'll get the bushy bodyguard back. And then this time we are going to use the bushy bodyguard. Offspring two. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I need to keep my defense up. So uh, when it enters return, Uh, I think, I mean, I guess I could keep getting creatures, but I don't think, okay, I think I want to keep everything on the board, so, done. We're going to forage, one, two, three, submit, 
then no foraging. We're gonna hold. No attacks. And then I'll be able to attack with bigger. They're gonna just chomp. It feels bad, but that's the way I do it here. I still I want them to run out their hand. I think I might just chomp. Yeah. I don't like the, that they're scrying either. Okay. Now their hand is run out. Okay, great. So I need to kill this thing, probably. Let's shoot their haster. Which helps. Then we'll tree guide. Yeah. Um... What do I have that has lesser mana? Uh, one target which you control with lesser mana. So I could bounce back. Oh, I think I should have put the counters on this now that I think of it. Um, himself? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to put... We're going to bounce nothing. So submit nothing. And we're going to put the counters on... Let's see. Uh, this is going to be plus 6, plus 6. That'll be a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, let's put it on the little guy. Because it doesn't matter in the end. They're just going to chomp. Makes sense. One half effect. I can't bounce this. I need to play a 5 to bounce this. But reusing this ability seems pretty good. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, I do like the cleric. So we'll do this. We'll bounce. No, oh, it doesn't. This is not what I want to bounce, though. Okay. So mid zero. I guess I can use this ability at the end of their next turn. Okay. Uh. And then. Just holding for now. That's my way to get back in the game. I'm sure they have some removal spell saved for that. Wow. Okay. I mean, I can't do anything about that. But I guess this is why they saved all their stuff. Oof. They got what they needed. Their deck is definitely... I mean, I have some really good synergy, but this is just wild. Okay. Go to combat. I'm gonna do some trading. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, four plus four is eight creatures. So I can block things. Uh, okay. Target. This gets the bonus. Oh, I see. That does that. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we're gonna go to blockers, and we're gonna probably, unfortunately, trade in a lot of undesirable ways here. So I need to stay alive. Oh, that's eight that's coming through that I can't do anything about. So I have to block everything else, okay. Uh, you chump here. You will trade here. You will trade here. You will trade here. You'll trade here and you'll eat this. I think that's reasonable here. And then I take eight. Uh, go for a strike. We'll use, where are you? Your ability. Grab a squirrel. Uh, we'll take a wishy bodyguard. I'm still alive, which is amazing. Um, okay. Well, we have a lot of things that I, I can exile. And uh, what do we have? Six? Yeah. Let's bushy bodyguard. Make the offsprings. Okay. Yep. We're going to forge. Yes. Forge. One, two... Three. Submit. Forge. One. 
One, two, three, submit. And uh, go to combat. Can't really do much about this, so no attacks on the turn. Oh, hey, look. A mythic rare. What does this do? Whenever you attack, create a 1-1 one, one that's tapped in attacking, attacking creatures. Okay, so they gave everything. Yikes. Well, I mean, good game. You got me. Um, boom. 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 Oh, wait. Can I? Can I do this? I can't, right? Like, no matter what, I'm gonna... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Can I survive? Like, if I... Tr chump there. No, I can't. There's no, there's no surviving, right? No. Okay, yeah, I'm dead. Yeah, there's no... There's no surviving this. It's just a matter of uh Oh yeah, they had they had this thing. Cool. I mean, I was dead. But I put up a fight. I mean, I survived longer than I did against my first opponent. That was brutal though. Two very brutal games. All right, keep going. Okay, we're against Monster 3RX 3RO. What a name, but they're wearing the same face. Uh, yeah, I guess we can play this on green. So we can keep this. This okay. Play this and hold. I think we play the probably the cultivator next. I got lands for days, so okay. Naya, oh, yeah, interesting. Um, we will play the extra black and then cultivate. Or, yeah. something a little bit better than that but I guess I just shoot it I think I just shoot it right that makes the most sense to me we'll play the forest do I just shoot it or do I like play something else like maybe play this and then no I don't really have another more viable option here so we'll just shoot this Attacking. Removal. Sure. Okay, that's my one guy. Go ahead and play my glide glaive, glide dive duo. I think this is a better card, anyways, for me right now. It's a three three flyer. They have removal, then you know I feel bad, but that's life. Okay. Remove that. Okay, we're gonna just play the lookout then. Grab a land. We'll play another land. We'll hold. I have a brawl and the tree guard duo available now. Okay. Whenever for the first time it gets plus one plus zero. Okay. So, we'll play the land. We've, we're flooding a lot. Play you. Make you a 3 4. Uh, go to combat. Swing with our Vigilant 3 4. Okay. Some, they have a trick of some sort. Oh, I see. 
but that was not going to go well for us. Alright, I guess we're on team do nothing then. Um, I'm glad I didn't like put all my resources into that. Oh. Okay. That's cool. Um, we are going... What do I have? Three cards in here? I'm gonna brawl. Give them a, do I give them a fish? I think so. You will fight you. And then... Let's go ahead and... They have the bushy bodyguard. We'll put the counters on the little one, right? Yeah, I think we put the counters on the little one. I made this mistake before, and I'm not going to do it again. So, play you. We're going to offspring. Auto pay. Okay. Uh, we'll do it this way, so that I do this in the correct order. We're going to offspring, and we're going to exile. Yes. Feed uh, you and you. Submit. Okay. And if I attack, they have to block with both to stop at this, right? It's probably an okay trade. No, you know what? I, I think that just having a big body is fine. That's fine. I still have bigger bodies. Sure. Okay. Uh, I have two cards left. Well, tree guard duo. Put that on here. Go swinging. And then they only have food left. I don't want to play this just yet. I'd like to get at least one of these two to be stronger, so... Oh. Okay. Four, five. Uh, okay, if that... Put a plus one, plus one counter. And target your opponent control until it leaves the battlefield. Okay. We're not in a great spot here. Uh, we're gonna need something a little better. We're just gonna hold here then, so I can double block the Drift Group Gloom Coyote if I need to. Oh, hey, look. We have a, a super rare. Okay. Great. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna need something way better than what I have now, because land is... Holy moly, lands! Come on, guys. Can we, can we do a little better than just playing all the lands? Okay. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna take four, five, six, seven, probably eight. I think I, I can hold for one more turn. That's about it. Okay. No attacks on the turn. I'd like to get this back, so let's see how it works. Yeah, I mean, that's annoying. Okay, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I can double block. I think I have to... Let's see. I can trade here, but they might have something. Double block this. I think I have to... I think I'm going to double block Mabel. If they have the another... The green combat trick, I'm really dead, though. Well, I'm really dead if they have it in any way, shape, or form, regardless, so let's just do this. Okay. That is, uh... Amazing. Alright, nice. My opponent has everything. Everything that they could ever need, and I have nothing. And that... I mean, after drawing every single land in my deck, I've drawn finally a thing. 
I don't think that's enough that's going to get me out of this, but uh, let's go ahead and try. Offspring. Pay this. Uh, we'll do the little one first. Oh, we don't, we didn't have three. Uh, we didn't have three. Okay. And here we go. No attacks. Oh, that's clever. So now I'm forced into bad blocks again. Okay. Do this. Do this. Do this. And this, I think, is how we do it. Yep. Oh, they had trample. Yeah. I was going to die anyway. And I was so far behind and flooding, you know. This is probably one of the most disappointing sealed decks I've ever done. Because I just got run over by three red-white... <laughs> Basically perfect red-white decks. Uh, and yeah, I got to do some fun stuff with my decks, but wow, that was like pain in the heart of amount of pain there. Well, we, let's open our three packs and our measly 200 gems, and uh, that'll be that. Right, what do we take here? Do we take this haster? 2-2, two, two, second spell deals two damage to an opponent. That could be fun. Let's see, I like this as a removal spell. This is okay, I guess. I think this is, well, this is interesting because if you control a token, then it's a very aggressively costed card. But I think that this may be just fun enough to take first. I don't know, I think early on, I'm, I'm gonna lean towards rares before I realize what the set is about. But I think that there might be a a reason to play the Warren Guard first instead, because you just get the right tokens, and this this thing is just a, a beater, right? So, yeah, we'll see how the set plays out. I'll start with the Hearthborn Battler. All right, pack two, Vren the Relentless, a three four with War two. Okay, that's fine. The second thing is just fine. At the beginning, create with. Creatures that were exiled this turn. Oh, okay. So that's cool. I like Vren. There's a lot of value in that. The Wave Rider can be okay. I think that this is a pretty good card, actually, If as long as I have instants and sorceries going on. So removal or something of the sort. Don't have that right now. This is cool. I don't think I'd take this first. I don't, I don't know if I'd take this first either. I'd probably take the Wave Rider if it weren't for the Vren. I'm probably taking Vren first. Yeah, Vren is the pick there. All right, what do we have? Coiling Rebirth. That is not my first pick. I think that this could be good, but I need things to get back, and I need to make sure I'm in the deck that does that first. I like Feather of Flight, and the Sun Shower Druid is okay. I think Feather of Flight probably wins this one. There's no removal here, and you know the offspring cards aren't amazing. So yeah, I'll probably take Feather of Flight, and uh, that will be the pick there. Let's go ahead and open some packs all the way down the the line. Here we go, Rush of Dread. Mm, that's okay. I think I'm more interested in Treasure Treasure than Rush of Dread, just because. Well, I'll take, I'd take it. I mean, there's enough value here that makes it probably good enough. Especially with this pack, which isn't that amazing. Uh, I found that Lost in the Maze is pretty good. I like Detective Satchel quite a bit too, but this is something that I'd want to get other things with first and maybe play into it later, so. Yeah, I'll take Lost in the Maze here. Okay. Let's see. I think of these, 
I might take the Kinjali Dawn Runner, but this is an aggressive set, and I think that this is probably the most aggressive of these cards. It's not the best. I mean, this is certainly a weaker pack, but that's probably the way I'm going to go. See, I'm definitely not taking this, and this didn't really have an artifact scene, so this is probably not my pick either. Leaving me with the high fade negotiator, that was okay. The clothier was okay, the guide was okay. Yeah, this is not that great of a uh, pack. I'll take the negotiator here, but I won't be happy about it. All right, we're not taking Transcendent Message. That's probably a big mistake. I like the Xerox Strobe Knight quite a bit. It's probably gonna be my first pick in this pack. Just a 2-2 Flying Vigilance that can sometimes create an additional 2-2 is great with me. And nothing else here I think is quite on the same level. And that is going to be it for me. Let me know what you thought about the sealed pool and the deck that I built, as well as the games that I played. Was I unlucky? Did I fail to see ways out of the games? And were, were there better decks that I should have built instead? Please let me, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of my videos, you can hit subscribe. This is Refresh. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.